Hey Frontline fans, welcome back to Comic Frontline and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do Spider Slayer's Hall, episode number 291, that's right fans, getting super close to number 300. But before we get started guys, just a reminder, I wanted to let you guys know that I am now doing an exclusive channel over on Vidme. So if you guys want to check me out and check out those exclusive reviews and videos, I'm going to leave the description box below. So please, guys, please follow me over there. Uh, my initial goal to start off is 50 subscribers because obviously the platform is not as big. So with that being said, let's get started with this week's haul. That's right, fans. If you're not familiar with the series, yes, I go to the comic book store every single week and I pick up the books. What I get, it's a mystery until I show you. So, here we go. Crappy white bag. Doesn't do a good job at containing a mystery because you can see right through it. But unless they're bagged and bored there. So, anyway. So, here we go. We take the comics out of the bag. Bag goes on the floor. And the first thing I wind up finding is Invincible, issue number 142. And it's called Robot War, part one of one. So we have a 12-issue story arc, and you have a story arc within the story arc, right? I mean, this is crazy. Part one of one of this whole robot craziness right here. And at the end of the last issue, that's who you saw Mark confront him, you know, him stopping him from going to Earth. So, uh, and you can see here in this very first panel that there looks like there definitely is a robot war and it's not bullshit. So we'll see where this takes us. We're getting close to the end now. All right. So next we wound up having Robotech issue number four. Um, this for some reason didn't seem like it came out for a very long time. It seems like it's been, I don't know, it's been absent. I don't, I'm not sure. But nevertheless, um, we'll see where Robotech goes. Um, it hasn't been like on my highly anticipated list as of recently. Uh, so, and being all the titles that I'm reading with Marvel at the moment, uh, this might get dropped. So we'll see where Robotech actually goes from this point forward. So cool concept as, you know, nostalgic 80s type of thing, uh, but it just might not rank up there high enough to keep reading it. So Robotech issue number four. Next, another independent comic book. Uh, this is called a dark fang. This is issue number one. Very interesting cover as it looks like you have some kind of vampire girl as she's like eating earth. That's, that's very weird. Uh, when you open up the, the book, well, well, yeah, when you open up the book, it's, it's kind of risque. Uh, I won't show that on there, but it's a very, um, cartoonist, you know, stylized type of art. Um, so I don't know. We'll see where this actually goes. I saw that there. This is really interesting. I like this, this opening artwork here, this one page spread. This is nice. I like it. So I don't know. We'll see where this one goes and what it's about and if it's worth continuing to read. So Dark Fang issue number one. All right, next, uh, we get the battle between Talia al Ghul and Catwoman. Uh, end of the last issue, they were going to have a cat fight. So we're going to see what happens in this book. Uh, who wins, who loses, where the story goes from here. So, yes, Batman issue number 35. All right, next. Dark Knight's Batman Who Laughs. Uh, that's right, guys. This looks like a really cool issue. And if you guys want to check out my review on that one, I'm actually doing the review on Vidme over there and um, I did read this already and I'm just telling you right now it's really really good I think it's one of the best metal tie-ins to date so really cool book the artwork is awesome in this issue um, it's just he's such a creepy character but here's the opening page in case you guys haven't seen it yet so really nice stuff here so Batman who laughs 
number one. All right, next. Tim Seeley is writing Green Lanterns now. Where the series will go, I don't know. Um, we got to see in the last little story arc how Jessica and Simon are these big galactic heroes, right? But then they can't land normal jobs. So it tells you on Earth they're nothing, but in the world they're something. And I liked that aspect of the characters. Um, we're going to see if these con these characters continue to grow. Opening page right here. <laughs> That's pretty cool as we get to see Bumbalunga the Unrelenting is the dude's name. What kind of name is that? Bung Bungalumbaga. I can't even say that name. <laughs> He's on a megaphone and stuff? Dude, that's messed up. So, <laughs> this is Green Lantern. Oh, man. Green Lantern's issue number 35. Next, Tom Taylor's Injustice issue number 14. We got Batman there, the evil Batman or whatnot, um, all tied up in chains and he's being captured. Tom Taylor does a great job with this series. Really looking forward to the new Jean Grey series that he's writing, uh, the X-Men Red title. What do you guys think about that roster there? Put it in the comments below. So this is issue number 14. Next, Spider-Book this week. Issue number 791 of The Amazing Spider-Man. Nice cover there as Spidey is kissing Bobby. Um... Okay, I was just about to say, does he have his mask on? But it looks like his mask is up there. I was like, that's got to be uncomfortable trying to kiss a girl when you have your mask on. But he's, you know, making out with her in the, you know, rooftops of New York. So, hmm, love's in the air. So, we'll see what this particular issue goes forward here. Um, you know, Spider-Man is better for me than before this whole legacy thing happened. So, The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 791. Next. Superman, issue number 35. This time we have John on the cover. Last issue focused on Lois on how she became a Fury. So I guess maybe this time it's focusing more on John on how he fits in on Apocalypse. I don't know. We'll see. So this is Superman, issue number 35. Next, Weapon X, issue number 11. As we continue Weapon H... Um, here, and it looks like the other X-Men are on top of him. He's freaking out. Uh, I still am a little bit behind on this. I did not read issue number 10, uh, but here we get to see, uh, this battle here, uh, between the two characters, so that's pretty cool. I think between Laura, I think it's Laura there, or, um, Lady Deathstrike, I can't quite tell, so, I don't know, we'll see, but it looks like an epic fight right from the start. Um, just non-stop action with this book. So, Weapon X, issue number 11. Next, we are on Mojo Worldwide, part 6. This takes place in X-Men Blue, uh, issue number 15. Dude, Mojo is fat. Like, I, it's, when you get the side view of him, he's just ginormous, man. He's just some creep, right? He's just like YouTube, um troll just gone bad right i mean he's insane you got all the x-men just dead you know traditional comic book cover so we'll see how this one <clears throat> i think this is the conclusion of this or this is actually continue after this i'm not entirely sure yeah no it does end in this because at the end it says the end with a question mark but of course i'm not going to spoil that for you i don't even know what happens so this is x-men Blue issue number 15. All right, next, we get the continuation of Darth Vader issue number 8. Uh, this is a candidate for cover of the week for me as you get to see Anakin there um, just doing his meditation and he has no armor on him. His, his helmet is not on him. Uh, obviously, he's just got his probably his breathing apparatus so he can breathe. Um, but that's really awesome right there. And the last issue had to do with him, uh, you know, being in charge of the Inquisitors. So that's an interesting, uh, storyline to fall back on. So this is, uh, this is cool. So Darth Vader issue number eight. Next, 
Uh, Marvel Legacy continues. The Incredible Hulk. This is issue number 710 as this goes back to the Planet Hulk thing. In the last issue, you got to see Amadeus Cho make his way back to the planet. And he's interacting with everybody. And now he basically has to save them once again. But as Amadeus Cho. So... Really interesting looking book. Uh, here you get to see an opening page of this book. And it kind of reminds you of like maybe like something from Mad Max from the movie, right? Um, it looks really, really cool. Lots of explosions, things like that. So I'm interested to see how this continues. So 710 of the Hulk. Next, we wind up, I got a lot of stuff this week. I didn't think there was that much coming out. And I'm like, holy crap. That's what I get for not doing research before I buy books. Hawkeye issue number 12. Um, it says the best there is. So here we have Katie and Laura interacting with each other. What this conversation is about, I don't know. I think this starts a new story arc for the character. <clears throat> so looking forward to it. So Hawkeye issue number 12. All right. <clears throat> so now we go into the Marvel lenticulars this week. So this time is... A throwback from Doctor Strange, issue number 177. And now we go into, I guess, 381. So here is the shift. There you go. New. Old. New. Doesn't it feel like you're at the eye doctor? You guys go to the eye doctor? What do you see better? One. Two. One. Or two. Um, can you do that again? Yeah, sure. One, two. One or two. Oh, they're about the same. <laughs> right? It always feels like that. Okay, next one. And I don't read Doctor Strange, so I don't really have an intention of reading it unless I have that extra time to read the extra books. All right, next is The Secret Warriors. Um, issue eight. And this goes to Nick Fury Shield, uh, issue number one. So that plays tribute to that one. So here's the, I guess the old cover, and the new cover. Old, new, one, two. <laughs> oh, I'm so stupid. All right. Anyway, Spider Book book I do read all the time, and that's Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider Man. Um, this play, this is issue number 297, uh, behind bars. So he's getting arrested and he got the old Captain America in there as well. That's a cool looking issue. It doesn't change that much so you can actually tell. And then next we have the Scarlet Spider. This is issue 51, plays tribute to the Amazing Spider-Man issue number 10. So we have that one there. And of course, I'll read The Scarlet Spider, even though it's not my favorite comic. So it's pretty cool. If you get hoodie, no hoodie. Hoodie, no hoodie. <laughs> oh. And last but not least, probably a really highly anticipated um, book for Marvel Legacy. Because everyone wants to see what is going to be the outcome of this. And this is The Punisher. Um, issue number two, I don't know. I got to open it up. I think it's 280. These lenticular covers suck ass. When I can't even read the number of the book, that's a problem. 218. So there's the regular cover right there. So Punisher wearing the weapons. Is it just for the weapons? You know, just to get more ammo on his back. Maybe that's probably what it's for. But there's your lenticular cover going back to War Machine there. So that's pretty cool concept. Interesting on that story. So there you guys have it. There is the haul for the week. This has been episode number 291. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Now it's your turn in the comments below to tell me what you thought of um, you know, the comics that you're looking forward to reading. Which ones you're going to drop. Which ones you're not going to drop. And fans, as always, thank you for so much for watching Comic Frontline. Again, check out my VidMe channel. I'll leave that link below for exclusive content. Go on to ComicFrontline.com. 
You can also join us on our Discord, where you can chat with us 24-7 of the day. And yes, every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we do our live stream. We talk about all kinds of great comic book goodness. And that's about it, guys. So as always, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on our next comic book review. Take care, guys. Bye.